Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School for January 24th, 2021. And we are in a new series uh, of six different sessions on spiritual, it's on spiritual disciplines and it is talking about the benefits of them, about knowing God, being intimate with God, maintaining our focus on God, and also being able to connect with our Lord and Savior and His body, which is the church and then joining God's work. Today, we're talking uh, about the benefit of spiritual disciplines. And growth in our Lord and Savior occurs when we practice these spiritual disciplines. We as a people, we will cut back on our spending and save if there is something that we want to buy. Athletes spend a lot of time training. They have to be disciplined in order to do well in their competitions. And they have a reward that waits for them. But not everyone wins, but we can be the best that we can be when we do these spiritual gifts. And there is a great benefit for us because of our efforts and that is striving towards being like our Lord and Savior. That is godliness. The scripture that we're talking about comes from 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 1 through 10. Paul wrote this to Timothy around A.D. 63 while he was in a Roman prison. And Paul wanted to make sure that he understood the order and structure that should be in the church. And there were issues about false teachers and Paul wanted to help him to be a faithful minister of our Lord and Savior. So let us go to prayer. Our Lord and God, we again thank you that we can be here, that we can look into your word, Lord, that we can understand how you want us to grow in our godliness and how you want us to strive to be like your son, Lord. We want to be more like our Savior. And we ask that as we open your word, that the Holy Spirit will guide us and that we will begin to learn how we should grow and the ways that you have for us and what you want us to do and how you want us to serve you. And I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, Paul said, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, 
giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. In our world, it seems like whatever God calls good, the world seeks to, to destroy what he is saying. Scripture clearly states that our faith will be tested. And it says that we will suffer in this world in John 16, 33. And that we will be hated for his sake in Matthew 10, 22 and Matthew 24, 9. John, in 1 John chapter 4 and verses 1 through 6, said that we need to test the spirits to see if they were from God or if they were from somewhere else, like false teachers. We must be vigilant and not fall for the lies and for the deceptions of the devil. Now, in the church there, where Timothy was, they had some of the members that were giving heed to the seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. And, and these false teachers had, had fallen for the words that were spoken by the evil spirits. Now Paul said that this would happen in the latter times. Now this was not long after our Lord and Savior rose from the grave. But Paul said that in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith. So does that mean that we can lose our salvation? The answer to that is a very firm no, we cannot lose it. The Bible says in John 10, 27 through 30, that no one is able to snatch us out of his hand, out of our Lord's hands, out of God's hands. No one can do that. It's important that we understand that. All true folks who know the Lord as their Savior will endure to the end. Those are the ones that God has accepted in His Son and sanctified by His Spirit. And we will never fall away from that state of grace <clears throat> and we shall persevere to the end. <clears throat> But we might fall into sin and to temptation, <clears throat> whereby we will grieve the Holy Spirit and impair the graces and the comforts that, that come from the Holy Spirit and our Lord and bring judgment on ourselves <clears throat> but we shall be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. 
<clears throat> so we can be led down the wrong path by false teachers. And we should dedicate ourselves to growing in our faith and exercise spiritual discipline. Paul called these false teachers hypocrites. Uh, in the Greek, that means that they were actors. They were not who they said they were. The way that we combat these false teachers is by becoming well-versed in the scriptures. Paul also said that they were liars. He said that their minds, that their conscience had been seared by a hot iron. They were marked, they were branded by the devil, by Satan. And they had lost the power to make good choices in their lives. So they were marked, they were branded by Satan, and they belonged to him and were willing to do his work. These false teachers were advocating a type of legalism, and they were moving away from salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone. They were forbidding people to marry and demanded that they abstain from certain foods. Now this might have come out of, of the laws uh, that the Hebrews used for clean and unclean food, but this is not how the Lord meant it. Uh, they were deceiving by forbidding marriage. But marriage is God's good gift and is the foundation for family life in the home. Marriage is honorable and it is part of God's original plan for all of us. There in Genesis chapter 1 and 27 through 28, marriage is the right relationship for wholesome sexual expression and emotional fulfillment. And food was used by these deceivers. They demanded that people abstain from eating certain foods. So, the hypocrites and the liars Paul was talking about here deceitfully taught people to abstain from these things. That's not how God's worked. How, how, how God's worked. Marriage and also one's diet shouldn't be an issue unless our lifestyle uh, involves promiscuity and also gluttony. So all of these foods are good for us. And we need to understand that there are other do's and don'ts. We are saved through faith in Christ alone. And that is the starting point of our faith in the Lord. And through the indwelling Holy Spirit, God transforms our lives to conform to the person like His Son, in the image of His Son, Christ. And that's in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. 
these are a means by which the transformation uh, of growth in our Lord and Savior takes place. Now Paul goes on to say in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse 4 through 7a, he says this, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourish up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou shalt attain, but refuse profane and old wives' fables. We are to focus on and lift up God's truth. He, Paul is saying that every creature of God is good and all of God's creation is a good source of food. He says nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now, he is not talking about harmful food or even poisonous food. That would be foolish for us to eat. But we need to have the attitude of thankfulness toward the Creator who provides these foods for us. Paul did talk about one thing that we ought to check on, and that is eating meat that had been sacrificed to false gods, idols. Uh, he was saying, especially back then, that it might cause uh, other Christians to stumble in their faith. And so if, if that was the case, that we should abstain from eating meat that had been sacrificed to other gods. <clears throat> Paul also said that if it's received with Thanksgiving, that all food is sanctified, the, sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So, in our Lord and Savior, all food is clean. Jesus said, Whatsoever thing from without that entereth into man, it cannot defile him. <clears throat> because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly of the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blaspheming, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. From Mark chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. Sanctification by the Word of God Scripture and prayer has meaning not just for what we eat, but for all things that we do in our lives. The work of God's free grace whereby we are renewed in the whole man after the image of God 
are enabled more and more to die unto sin and live unto righteousness. The spiritual disciplines, those of prayer and the study of the Scripture, are means which the Holy Spirit uses and transforms us into the image of, of Christ. Paul said to Timothy, and he's saying to us, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of, of Jesus Christ. So spending time reading his word, studying his word in prayer, worship, and assembling ourselves with each other helps us grow and learn and apply in our lives the thing that we should be doing, striving to be more like Him. That is godliness. Because we will be nourished up in our faith and of good doctrine. We will understand more and more what the Lord has for us. Just like Mr. Timothy had been raised up in the Word of God with his mom and his grandmother, and then more and more by Paul. And so he, he was able to learn and to grow and ended up being able to do the work for the Lord. He was a good minister of our Lord and Savior. Leaders must never allow their ministries to take priority over their personal spiritual growth. We risk our ministry if we sacrifice that personal time in fellowship with God. And we cannot spiritually nourish others if we are spiritually starving. So the spiritual disciplines serve as a means by which we learn and grow and become more like our Lord and Savior. Timothy and all of us are to reject the teachings of these false teachers. And we are to call them what they are, profane, that means spiritually empty, and also godless. And to call them also old wives' fables, which are absurd and not worthy of any serious thought or consideration. Now Paul goes on there in 1 Timothy in chapter 4 and verse 7b through verse 10, and he says this, And exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men especially of those that believe. Paul urged Mr. Timothy to train himself in godliness because that reflects 
the character of God. Yes, we Christians must live a life that takes a special commitment <clears throat> and it requires an investment of time, dedication, and also discipline so that we learn and grow and become more like our Savior. And that is done through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. So we should be learning the truths that we find in the Bible and applying them in our everyday life, in our thoughts, our words, and our behavior, in obedience to God and through the power of His Holy Spirit. We need to study His Word. We need to spend time in prayer. We need to spend time with God in fellowship and his also in, in the corporate uh, worship and the fellowship that we find here in our church, here at Westside and in the universal church of our Lord and Savior. So as the athletes push themselves, train themselves, and even do things that they don't like in order to do well in their competitions, we are also to do well in ours. And so that takes us to prayer and fasting, Bible study, and the other spiritual disciplines, some of which we probably don't like or don't want to do, but we know it's the very best thing for us. So we need to invest our time and our discipline and our dedication. And we won't always feel like doing them, but the goal is a closer relationship with God that will show in our life. In other words, greater godliness. Just a closer walk with thee, granted Jesus, is my plea. We want to be more like him. <clears throat> so, it is good for us to do some physical exercise and stuff, but it is more valuable for us to do the spiritual training. That is more important because it has not only certain benefits in our everyday life here, but it also has a lot of value of impacting all actions and experiences and our relationships with other people for good. Paul says that this growth takes time and also discipline. And he says that it is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance because it is trustworthy to know God through Jesus Christ and to show our love for him and our love for other people is how we should live in Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And this, of course, includes spreading the gospel to all people. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every, every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And 
Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. <clears throat> so we have hope in the living God because we've been born again. Our sins have been forgiven. We are reconciled to God and brought into God's family as his adopted children, and we've been given eternal life. So this is what helps us while we're here and gives us a lot of benefits in eternity. Now, Paul said that God was the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. He was not talking about what we call, uh, yeah, what we call universalism, that everybody's going to go to heaven. We know there's only one way that we can go to heaven, and we find that in John chapter 14 at verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, scripture teaches us that salvation is in Christ alone. <clears throat> so Christ made the payment for the sins of all people past, present, and future. But it is effective only for those who repent and place their faith in our Lord and Savior. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 6. And 1 John 2, 2. Christ is the Savior of all races and nations. He is the Savior, preserver, deliverer, and protector. Jesus is the head of the church and the Savior of the body, which is the church, all of us that know him as our Savior. Jesus has abolished death and brought life and immortality through the gospel to all of us, but only to the people that have received him as their Savior. So we are to live every day living out our faith, growing spiritually in godliness and being the right kind of witnesses <clears throat> excuse me to a watching world <clears throat> so let us not drift through life let us train ourselves in godliness let us practice the various spiritual disciplines knowing that this pleases God and makes him happy and there will be a great reward in doing so, both in this life and for all eternity. So how will each of us exercise ourselves unto godliness? We must prepare for and attend all these sessions to learn more about the spiritual disciplines and how we can use them and apply them in our lives. And we need to invest more time in these next six weeks learning these things. And then it would be very good for us to begin a new relationship with a new or a young uh, person that has come 
uh, to the Lord uh, and, and the same gender that we could help, encourage, and guide. The best chance for our neighbors to learn about our Lord is to share Him with them, and it might depend on our godliness and how we live our lives, what they see about how we live. Because the need around us, we may both labor and suffer reproach to be in good shape spiritually. We need to strive for it. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, please open our eyes to the importance of training in godliness. Help us to become more disciplined by doing the things that will help us to grow spiritually. Help us to reflect on our current spiritual condition and help us to live more and more like you because we know of the benefits that we will have now and also in eternity. Lord, we ask that you would help us uh, to commit to serving you and to uh, learning how to be more like you, to be more godly, to be able to share your word and to talk with those who need to hear your word. Lord, may we respond uh, to the leading of the Holy Spirit and to your word as, as we read it, as we study it, Lord. Help us to be more like you. And I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.